This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York, joined by Juan Gonzalez in Chicago, as we turn now to remember one of Juan's close, longtime comrades, Juan Ramos, a former Philadelphia city council member, founder and leader of the Philadelphia chapter of the Young Lords. Juan Ramos died last month at the age of 71, after a battle with Alzheimer's. He was just two when his family moved from Puerto Rico to Philadelphia, became active in civil rights and high school, spoke out against racism, police brutality, as well as poverty and housing issues in communities of color. He later helped lead efforts in the Puerto Rican community to defeat Philadelphia Mayor Frank Rizzo's attempts to eliminate term limits. Juan Ramos went on to found and lead the Puerto Rican Alliance, which fought for bilingual education against police brutality, spearheaded a large squatters movement, and abandoned government-owned houses, leading to over 150 Puerto Rican families eventually winning titles to those homes. He also served as a Philadelphia city council member, union organizer, and church deacon. Juan Gonzalez, first of all, our condolences on the loss of your friend. Can you share more? more about Juan Ramos's life. Yes, Amy. Well, I think that it's it's really not possible to overestimate the influence that uh, Juan Ramos had on uh, the social and political and liberation struggles of the uh, the Puerto Rican Latino community, but also of all communities in Philadelphia. He was widely respected by people in the halls of power, as well as people, uh, ordinary, everyday folks on the streets of Philadelphia. You know, when he he founded the Young Lords chapter in Philadelphia, he he and the other people with him, uh, Idma Lopez Salter, Wilfredo Rojas, the others who founded the Young Lords chapter, had a much more difficult situation than those of us who were involved in the Young Lords in New York. Of course, we were organizing in the era of John Lindsay, who was a uh, basically a, a mayor of New York who was a liberal Republican and who was not did not tend to want to crack down on any kind of dissident movements. Uh, however, Juan and the other young lords in Philadelphia were facing perhaps the most uh, neo-fascist mayor in American history, uh, Frank Rizzo, who was an ultra-right-wing Democrat who was constantly attacking any kind of dissidents. Uh, he had a, a chief inspector of his civil affairs unit, uh, George Fensel. That was the Red Squad of Philadelphia. Uh, they were the ones who stripped the Black Panthers naked when they arrested a, a, a several of them in North Philadelphia, who beat up a, a young Mumia Abu-Jamal when he was just a high school student organizer. Uh, for uh, better conditions of black students in, in Philadelphia high schools. And George Fensel was the kind of guy who would go to every single demonstration and personally let any activist know that he knew their first name, he knew where they lived, uh, and he was constantly trying to intimidate folks. Uh, the Lords in Philadelphia were firebombed twice in the, in the first year of their existence, and uh, no one ever found out who did the firebombings. So that was the kind of climate in which uh, Juan was able to begin organizing in the uh, Puerto Rican and Latino community at the time, and he had made Amazing success. Uh, I, even though I knew him from the Lords, it wasn't until I moved to Philadelphia in the uh, uh, in the uh, mid to late 1970s that I began to actually work closely with him. Uh, and by then, he was leading the fight against Rizzo to stop the charter change so that Rizzo could not remain as mayor for life. A successful movement, and out of that came the Puerto Rican Alliance, which Juan was not only the founder but the first president of. And, uh, and there were amazing things that the alliance did in its time. Uh, for, for instance, he was one of the first people to talk about uh, the Navy presence uh, in the islands of Culebra and Vieques, mostly because a lot of the fishermen who had been, uh, who had been uh, pushed out of their homes by the Navy uh, in Vieques had ended up uh, moving to Philadelphia. So there was a large uh, a community of former Vieques residents who lived in Philadelphia, and they uh, they produced a lot of solidarity efforts on behalf of those of their family members who were still on the island of Vieques. Uh, and, of course, I think probably the, the most uh, 
significant contribution that Juan made was his leadership of the squatters movement. You know, after the savings and loans crisis of the uh, late 1970s, there were thousands and thousands of abandoned homes that were federally owned because HUD had foreclosed on them, uh, but uh, no one was living in them. And so um, we in the alliance led a squatters movement to basically for people to break into the homes, uh, to the boarded up homes, and make them livable again, homestead. And uh, we had hundreds of families in those homes, and uh, but the government was still threatening to evict everyone. So we started a whole protest movement. I remember uh, in uh, early 1980. Uh, we led an occupation of Independence Hall, the seat of American democracy. I think the only time that Independence Hall was ever occupied by a group of protesters. Uh, and with the families and the children, everyone, we sat in at Independence Hall for a day until the police evicted us. Uh, but George Fensel was uh, so worried about the bad publicity of arresting children as well as their mothers that they basically put everybody into paddy wagons, drove them a few miles away, and dumped us out in the street again. Uh, but then subsequently, I think the most significant uh, uh, civil disobedience action was in April of 1980, when um, we were still trying to get the titles to the homes of the squatters. And uh, so uh, we decided to occupy the headquarters of Jimmy Carter's presidential campaign. Uh, at the time, Jimmy Carter was in a tough race against an insurgent, Ted Kennedy, who was trying to contest his nomination for the presidency. And they were neck and neck going into the Pennsylvania primary. And on the day before the primary, we occupied the offices of Jimmy Carter. And back in those days, the offices were key because, you know, all the mobilization of voters was done by phone banking and by the, the index cards that you had of your preferred voters. This was long before the Internet and, and really before mostly of computers. Uh, and so they needed those headquarters. And we had occupied the state headquarters downtown on, uh, on Chestnut Street in Philadelphia. And so the Carter administration dispatched Bill Gray, who was the dean of the congressional delegation of Philadelphia, an African-American minister, uh, who was actually a good friend of ours. And I'll never forget, it was midnight before the Pennsylvania primary. And Bill Gray meets with uh, Juan Ramos and myself in a little bar a, a few blocks away from the protest. And he says, look, the White House has sent me down here. They've authorized me to negotiate with you. Uh, I give you my word that uh, if you leave the offices tonight, because we need them for tomorrow's election, uh, you will get the titles to your uh, the homes for all the squatters. However, we can't make any announcement. We can't look like we've given in to you. But I give you my word. And I, of course, was not in favor of a of just a word. I wanted something in writing. But Juan was much more uh, wise about this. And he said, look, I've known Bill Gray all my life. Uh, I trust him. Uh, we're going to accept his word, and we're going to pull out. So we did, and and uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the families pulled out. the The primary went ahead. Carter won uh, the Pennsylvania primary, and from then on, he he swept uh, Ted Kennedy in the remaining primaries. Uh, so uh, I think it was uh, important that one had that kind of practical sense. He was a revolutionary, but he also had a practical sense. You want to get things done. Uh, one of his other great accomplishments was the development of a children's festival at Hunting Park in, in Philadelphia, which became an annual you know, event attended by thousands of people, uh, basically a series of, of, of games and, and uh, uh, athletic events and others that became a fixture of the Puerto Rican community of Philadelphia. There are so many things that he was able to accomplish, uh, of course, beside being a city councilman, beside being a, an appointee of uh, Mayor John Street in the Street Administration, uh, he was just a wonderful person with an enormous capacity for understanding how you meet the needs of uh, people who are oppressed and uh, in need of, uh, of, of organizing. And he's a great loss to the, to, to the Puerto Rican community. And I, I want to especially express my condolences to his uh, wife of many years, Ana Sotre, who herself led a, an, a, was a director of a fantastic folkloric dance group for many years in Philadelphia, and to all of the other uh, comrades of his in that city. 
Well, Juan, we thank you so much for that remembrance. And again, our condolences. Juan Ramos, rest in peace and power.